Hey, what's happening, guys? This is Mike Moo here. Um, I am recording this kind of like a podcast format, if you can't tell from the video length. This is probably going to be somewhat of a lengthy video because I am going to ramble on about some uh, questions that uh, that some friends and people that I know have often asked me about about my cameras. Um, I, whenever I go out, I they often see me with different types of cameras, different styles of cameras. You know, I, I just love photography and uh, you know producing videos and photos. Uh, I like to record memories. Just it's just something that I like a lot. And as a result, you know, a lot of my friends actually get a lot of nice pictures uh, from you know my my hobby, uh, which used to be a business way back in early two thousands. I'm gonna try to get back into it more now, uh, just because it's something that I enjoy and something that I miss. So I'm gonna do some more photo shoots, uh, more in 2018 than ever before. So expect to see a lot more from me. You're looking at my Instagram page right now. You'll see uh, I'm not super active on it, um, nor am I really great on social media. So you will see some pictures uh, on here that um, are kind of just st st fun stuff that I just like to shoot. So, um, okay. So the question that I get is, Mike, you know what what is up with these cameras what are you using now what do you recommend um, and I, I produced a nice video back in January that if I had to choose one camera uh, for myself or for most people the Sony RX10 mark IV would be it so if you're looking for that one camera I'd urge you to go ahead and take a look at that video it's pretty long but I think I have some really good information in there Essentially, it is the best of Sony's one-inch sensors, and the one-inch sensors is basically the sensor size, uh, the imaging sensor that captures the image or the video uh, from the camera. So when you're looking at something like when you're looking at something like a, a smartphone, for instance, you are looking at a fraction of an inch in terms of sensor size. Now, why the bigger sensor size matters most is, is because you are able to capture a lot more light and therefore uh, be able to capture more light in more situations. And you can also fit more pixels in there if you like. Um, and there's, there's a lot of interesting tweaks that you can go ahead and do when you have more options when you have uh, access to a bigger sensor. Right. So the one-inch sensor, I think, is really great for. It's just hit the point where it's just fantastic, and the quality is is really really excellent. And so the RX10 Mark IV is what I would recommend that people get if they were thinking about getting a DSLR. This is going to be their first one, and they're just going to be doing general photography or general videos. Even they're focusing more on photography rather than videos, and vice versa. The RX10 Mark IV is still going to be the one that I'm going to recommend. The problem is, is that it is $1,600 as before, as I said uh, before, and it's also fairly large. It's not something you're just going to throw in. Let's say if you're if you're female, you carry a purse uh, in a purse just casually and go, unless you have a relatively uh, big purse. This is something that you would, if you walk around with uh, around your neck, you'll definitely look kind of like a tourist. Right, so this is ideal for for once in a lifetime opportunities where you can get to travel. Um, you're enjoying a vacation with a family. Uh, you're shooting sports, maybe of your kids. You want to be able to capture them um, on the go. You know, kids basically of any age, just adults, action, sports, everything. This covers everything, and and that's why it's the only one camera for me. However, uh, when I go out and about every for my everyday carry, what I use every day, that's d definitely not what I, I carry with me every day, right? I, I'm one of the few people that actually like to walk around with a uh, fanny pack or a man purse, yeah. And so I actually have options to carry additional things in there, right? So I think if you were to have a secondary or something that is basically in a one inch sensor size that you are good enough to carry around with you and get appreciably better pictures than you can get from let's say an iPhone 10 or the fanciest um, uh, smartphone cameras, it's going to be the RX100 series. 
And as you can see, this is still relatively small. It's def definitely um, less than the size of an adult hand. Right here, I have the RX100 Mark II, and this is one of my favorite series of it. If you want the latest and greatest, you can get the RX100 Mark V. You know, I'll, I'll link down all the different series down below. They, it goes from uh, Mark I all the way through Mark V. Someone is, there's a lot of people thinking that there's going to be a new RX100 that's going to be Mark VI that's that's going to come out later on this year or or next year. We really don't know. They're a little bit behind their usual schedule. By usual, it's pretty much Sony's just killing it. They're producing so many new cameras all the time. And the latest was the, the Sony Alpha 7 Mark III, which is full frame camera, totally different class. That's something not for the casual user at all. It starts at $2,000 just for the body alone. Fantastic camera. I recommend getting that just based on all the reviews and everything I've read about it. But again, we're focusing on things that we're carrying every day for the non-professional or if people are not doing you know, professional shoots uh, primarily. Okay, so the, so it's the Sony DSC RX-100. And it's just basically one more zero than the RX-10 that I was recommending. And this is a smaller size. It's also a one inch sensor. It's got an amazing set of lenses on it. And when I say set of lenses, is that throughout the different models from one uh, Mark one and Mark two have different lens uh, zoom capability and light capturing capability versus the Mark three, Mark four and Mark five, three, four and five are all the same lens. But the sensors have definitely improved uh, over the years as as has been the processors. I think it's just Bion Z processor X more R. Uh, imaging sensor, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But any one of those are actually going to be really great for photography. Naturally, the newer ones, which is the Mark IV, Mark V, are going to have uh, faster processing, faster focusing, etc. And uh, you, you know, you're going to pay a, more of a premium for that. The reason why I carry, so um, I carry the Mark II, I don't use this quite as much as I used to. But the reason why I carry the Mark II is because the zoom range actually is uh, more than the three, four, and five. So it gives me more telephoto zoom, and the um, uh, the telephoto zoom is useful because normally when I'm shooting, I I have a fixed lens camera. So this is the other camera that I also carry a lot, uh, the Fuji X100F. I like this because the handling is so much better than the Sony. But the RX10 Mark II also has something called a hot shoe, which allows me to go ahead and, and attach external flashes on here. And it's an intelligent hot shoe. Um, I can also attach microphones and other accessories directly on here to shoot video. The negative of this, if, uh, if I had to pick one versus the other ones, is that it does not shoot 4K video. And also the battery life is really not that great because it's so small. The battery is absolutely minuscule. I often had to travel with a ton of these little BX1 slash batteries. This is a third party battery, by the way, which does not last as long as new ones. And, you know, I, I get fantastic pictures of it. There have been some trips that uh, I would take and this would be the only camera that I would carry because it's that good. Yeah, one inch sensor, Sony. Sony makes the best one inch sensors. It's used in, uh, used in a bunch of other cameras as well. But that'd be it, the RX100. Uh, series Mark One all the way through Mark Five. You can't really go wrong with any of those in the series. There's various different different differences between them. Get the one that you can afford, or with the features that you can't live without. Starting Mark Three, you have a built-in uh, eye viewfinder, and I don't have that on here. Instead, in that spot, I have this flash. And if that's something that's really important to you, uh, definitely get the Mark Three, Mark Four, or Mark Five. Mark V is, is obviously the one that I'm going to recommend, but it is $1,000, and that is uh, pretty pretty pricey. It shoots 4K, but uh, the 4K footage, like in many of these, tends to overheat after you record too much. So don't think of it like a camcorder. It's more like a photo instrument first. Okay, so that's the one that I would recommend for most people right here. If you're not, if you're not willing to go with the RX10 Mark IV, you know, that's basically big and looks like you can change lenses, but, but you don't, and you can't, you don't have to, you don't have to, because it's really fantastic. So the RX100, again, I, I like the Mark II. I recommend getting the Mark V. If I didn't already have the Mark II, I was looking into getting one, I'd definitely get the Mark V, uh, mostly because you got the 4K, right? But you don't get the hot shoe. 
The other camera many people will see me shooting with is super tiny, super small. And it is the DX01. This guy came out a couple of years ago. It also has a one inch sensor also by Sony. It's the same one as the Sony RX100 Mark III. But see, this is really tiny. Basically, uh, it's just basically the sensor here, right? With some Wi-Fi and electronics and, and the uh, fixed lens, which you uh, don't have an optical zoom on. And this, this one, the first one, has a lightning port connector that I connect on to my iPhone or iOS device and using the app. And basically everything that would have been in the camera is now, you know, the electronics and, and some other smart things such as live stream and everything is all um, in the smartphone itself instead. But with a recent update, you actually don't have to, um, there's no screen on here for, for, there's no color screen on here for you to see what you're shooting, but there is now a framing mode now I'll show you what that looks like over here. Maybe you can see part of it. Basically, it just gives you a dot matrix, black and white, to give you an idea exactly what it is that you're framing. And um, it shoots in a format that is raw and super raw, which basically shoots a lot of images together and combines them in a way such that you would get uh, amazingly detailed results that you you wouldn't get otherwise. So it's not not a not a new technique. But um, it also comes with uh, DxO software for you to process those raw images. And so as a result of that, you actually get, by the way, I'm going to have links down to all this stuff uh, below in the video. If you're just listening to this, um, you know, you can check out the YouTube video itself. Later on, you can check out all those links. But the DxO is what I have with me just about always because it's so tiny. Right. There are, you know, there are obviously issues with this. This is why I don't recommend this for everybody. This is just something that I keep out and use. If I'm casually out somewhere and I'm not going to carry any camera at all other than this little guy, this is the only guy that I bring. And mostly because it is so tiny and I can get fantastic results on here in, in most situations. And I always have my iPhone with me. So it is an appreciably increase in light capturing capability, right? So it's got the one inch sensor and it also records in a nice raw format that has a lot of latitude when I'm shooting with uh, super raw. So uh, a lot, I think a lot of my Instagram pictures are actually from the DxO uh, one. I think this one is DxO one. Yeah, DxO one, right? This is a picture at the Brooklyn Bowl in Las Vegas. And uh, it was it was pretty dark in here with the exception of you know the lights this is basically concert lighting and you can see it's i know this is low resolution on here but this is actually really relatively the noise is relatively well in control uh something similar to a sensor that is much bigger uh in terms of light capturing capability and and noise and and noise uh control so this is excellent it is officially better, but it definitely doesn't have, you know, awesome other features that you might find in the RX100 Mark V. You might be asking, well, why is that? Well, it's tiny, man. And the processing power is not going to be as phenomenal as the latest cameras, so, such as the RX100 Mark V or the RX10 Mark IV. But in the right situations, and and, and I, I shoot it in super raw, I can maybe shoot maybe two pictures over the course of 10 seconds. And that's because I'm choosing quality over quantity in terms of the capture. All right, it, it could do doom, 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 but then it's got to take some time to record, you know, like quick burst shooting. Okay, so that's the DX01. I... I haven't labeled a lot of these as DxO uh, one um, shots, mostly because I wasn't really that big into tagging, and still not. And this is this is part of the reason why my Instagram page does not um, have a whole lot of uh, of a whole lot of looks and likes and stuff. I, I I just take these pictures kind of for myself and my friends that might know and follow. And you can, um, I, I'm, I'll be tagging more of my DxO one shots for the shots that I do uh, more in the future. Okay, what well, is the shot with the X100F? All right, 
So I just discussed the three cameras here, recap the RX10 Mark IV, which I did a video on again, and is the one camera, if you had to choose one camera, right? I can, I can use this in professional situations. The second camera was the RX100 Mark V, which I do not own. Um, I owned the Mark IV for a little while, and I decided, you know what? I'm still gonna stick with the RX100 Mark II, uh, mostly because the Mark IV, uh, I wanted for the 4K video footage, but I didn't think it was quite there. But our RX100 Mark V is, is excellent. Okay, uh, that's $950 retail, or 790 used, as you can see right now. All right, so these are, these are the main two cameras. If you had these two cameras, Actually, you would just cover just about every situation. One, when you need a super zoom range and 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 um, 4K video shooting and just capturing everything at, at the cost of additional cost of $700 and also at the additional cost of size and weight. Uh, if, that, if those are not much of concerns, this would be the one, right? The RX10 uh, Mark IV. And if not, get, get the RX100 Mark V. Right, 948. I have the Mark II, but either of those would be fine. Okay, and then and then finally the the third camera I talked about is the DX01, and I'm a little bit cautious about recommending this only because it's been out for a while, and lately the company behind it is uh, is having some financial issues. Uh, they produce a software that I love a lot, but. You know they, but since I've bought this though, they have added a lot more accessories for outdoor use, um, uh, live streaming. I can actually live stream from the DX01 directly to my iPhone, which I've never done before, and because I just just haven't been doing a lot of live streaming on the go. And it is uh, a fantastic. It's it's fantastic lens, but also fixed focal length, right? Uh, you can't really zoom in on there. It's only 32 millimeters. Any zooming that you do might be digital zooming, right? But this is something I have with me always. And just if I'm going to take a snapshot and if, if people don't mind waiting for me to boot this up and plugging in, it takes about four or five seconds, then I can get a better shot uh, for them. Okay, so, so, so th that's the other camera uh, um, that I carry. Finally, for those who grew up shooting in film or like analog, uh, the X100F is another one that I carry. This is if I carry a backpack or if I carry something bigger, more like a shoulder bag. Because this is bigger, it's also got a bigger sensor. It's APS-C uh, sized, which is bigger. It's, it's even bigger than the one inch sensor. I wanna say, um, maybe I'll throw up a chart somewhere on here. It, it is appreciably bigger and so is the camera. But there's also no zoom on here. The quality is fantastic. The color that comes out of this is is just top notch. Um, I still shoot in raw, but I love the an the analog controls. There's a lot of nice controls for everything: the shutter speed, exposure compensation, aperture control, all the things that a photographer really needs. And it's also got a nice hybrid viewfinder. You could use it like a rangefinder, or you can also use it through the LCD screen, or you could do a hybrid thing. And they all work out really well, the EVF. But again, it's also fixed. It's also fixed focal length. So you're pretty much stuck unless you add on attachment lenses. But if you do that, then kind of what's the point? I, I have purchased the um, the converter lenses, and they're nice. But I find it's really a bit cumbersome in changing lenses because you just got to screw them on and, 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 and screw and unscrew them off, right? But if you're really into photography and you really love the controls uh, of, of like analog controls, the Fuji X100 series are, is, is, is going to be one that I'm going to recommend on, you know, on uh, higher up on the list, right? So maybe you might get a Sony RX100 series. And then you might get one of these uh, for when you need a little bit bigger sensor to capture lower light and capture just, um, it's just a fun camera to shoot with. I have never considered the Sony cameras really particularly fun. These things feel really electronic and they are. Um, 
and uh, the a lot of people complain about the menu system. I'm actually okay with it because I grew up shooting on a lot of the menu systems on here. And I, I got to say that the RX100 series is somewhat fragile. So if you do get one, definitely get an extended warranty on here. And I've had this for a really long time. It's got a lot of dings and scratches and stuff on there, uh, mostly because I let people actually borrow this and they ding them up, uh, not purposefully. It's just that's just what happens. So that is definitely something uh, to consider with the RX100 series. So out of all the image quality, uh, I would say that I like the RX10 Mark IV the best because the lens is so awesome all across the range. Um, but I love the colors that come out on, on here. It's effortless to get fantastic colors and simulations from Fuji and their, their different color simulations on X100F. I also love shooting with this the most. I also bought um, some accessories that work with it that, that help improve that as well. And it's, it's it's not something that I can ever find that I can ever get with um, with the Sony stuff. Is This is just so much more tactile, so much more better feeling, natural feeling, just, just straight up that I just love to shoot with this and look through it and shoot. And the styling is excellent. I've tried various different accessories with it, um, including stuff that makes it, makes it look less uh, fancy or expensive. And <laughs> I got a lot of slack for that on, on YouTube. But it is just a beautiful camera. And beautiful to have, to use, to shoot with, and the pictures come out fantastic. But it, again, it, this is there's no zoom range in here. This is not really great for uh, if you're doing uh, headshots or, or portrait shots or close-up shots because this, this doesn't do it. And in fact, I think my biggest problem with this is that I do like to shoot things up close. This is horrible at it. This is a really soft lens up close. Um, it's just something about it just is not primed for shooting up close. It just tends to get a little bit blurry and it makes the images soft. I like crispy images most of the time. And that is my big issue with the X100F. I'm hoping with the X100G, uh, or whatever they plan to call it, they, that they um, improve the lens a bit. Everywhere else is fine except for the close-ups. I want something that will make my close-ups also look amazing. And this, uh, this unfortunately, um, didn't happen to be it. Another one that I highly recommend that I no longer have, um, but it is really expensive, right? So we talked about the RX10 uh, Mark IV. That's the one with the super big zoom lens, one inch sensor. And then we talked about the RX100, which is the small compact pocketable uh, version. You can call this a pocket SLR with the zoom. And then finally, the equivalent of a fixed focal, but with a full frame sensor would be the Sony RX1. Now there's a there's a uh, Mark II version. I've only owned the RX1 uh, Mark One or RX One R. Okay, so the Mark II version is three thousand two hundred ninety eight dollars. The quality that comes out of this is pretty phenomenal. Uh, unfortunately, it people like it. This the Fuji is much more fun to shoot with, but in terms of pure image quality, the Sony R RX One. And the RX1 Mark II are going to blow the um, the Fuji away in many respects because it's a full frame sensor versus APS-C size, which is smaller. Okay, and the reason why I got rid of it is um, the RX1, where I sold it, was that I wanted to get the Fuji X100F because I just knew that it was just going to be a lot more fun to shoot. So I basically um, sold that, and basically that covered the cost of the X100F. The which um, which I currently have uh, in my arsenal. Okay, another one that I also tend to carry a lot of is the Micro Four Thirds, and I've done some professional shoots on here with the Micro Four Thirds. Maybe I'll link to some of those below. Uh, just over the years, I have done a lot of professional shoots with uh, Micro Four Thirds, primarily Canon, but a lot of Micro Four Thirds and Four Thirds as well. So the one that I carry around happens to be the GX eighty five, and that's because it's a fantastic deal right now for the price. Look at that, $600, and you get a decent lens. It's 60 megapixels, also records 4K. It's got a tilting LCD touch. And the reason why you want micro four thirds is because it is uh, the sensor is bigger than a one inch sensor. 
It's four thirds of an inch, so it is bigger, 33% more. So you can get better uh, light capturing capability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there are so many lenses for it. Right now on here, I have a 70 to 300 millimeter lens, which is the equivalent of 600 millimeters on a full frame sensor. This allows me to get really close and I can handle this and this is super duper lightweight because of the sensor size. This is actually the first sensor was designed specifically for digital. And um, you know, a lot of lenses back in the day when it was four thirds came out, uh, the lens, there didn't need to be any lens correction because there's no distortion, uh, very minimal distortion because it was designed to be digital from the ground up versus a lot of the other ones, which were, you know, film lenses uh, designed for a film sensor, basically film. Uh, versus a digital sensor. There's, so there were a lot of issues with that and the lenses back then. But this is designed to be digital from the ground up. You can get some really great cheap lenses on here. There's also some really expensive good lenses. And this will give you better quality than the one inch sensors. Right? But I, I, I've really found that the one inch sensors have, have uh, with the RX10 Mark IV really have, have come into their own. And not having to mess with all this other stuff and all these other lenses, all these other accessories, I would just, that's why I said RX10 Mark IV. If I do it all over again, I wouldn't have gotten pretty much any of the DSLR stuff for all the periods that I was not pro, which is most of my life. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I shot some, I, saw, I shot some uh, portraits, family portraits a couple weeks ago. And I used them. I, I used my Micro Four Thirds. I used an Olympus uh, OMD series. I highly recommend that as well. Um, the reason why I don't carry it with me everywhere is because um, I've been shooting a lot of single focal length stuff and also video stuff. So I've been I've been. Do, you've seen me do videos on the Remove K One. This is a gimbal on one camera. This is my 4K video recorder. And, uh, you know, I just got it, I got the full production unit uh, just three, four weeks ago. So I, I've been carrying that mostly, not shooting as many photos as I used to before. Okay, so to recap, if you're, if you're going from a smartphone and you wanna, you wanna get an appreciably better uh, quality and you want it pocketable, right? Um, just high quality stuff, RX100. RX100 Mark 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Get the Mark 5 if you have $1,000 to spend. If you don't, consider getting the Mark 3, which is probably about six or $700. I think they still make them because they're, they're still that great. Or if they don't, uh, let's see, $650. You can get the Mark 3, $650, right? If you wanna use flash, then um, I suggest getting the Mark 2. Uh, let's see if it's still being sold. Yeah, 550 bucks or 300, 300 some dollars used. The Mark II is the only one with hot shoe. Okay. Now, if you want to just to get a camera that you know you're going to use for every single situation, you're going on a trip, travel, you don't mind looking like a tourist, get the RX10 Mark IV. That is $1,700. And I did a whole video talking about that. And I think I showed some examples of that. That is just truly remarkable. It's it's you know it's about this big. I don't have it in front of me right now. It's it's at the other house, um, but you know it, it looks like a regular camera. It does until you extend zoom, and then you will see that uh, it has that range, 600 millimeter, right? Um, and then finally, uh, I shared with you my everyday, always on me camera, which is DDXO uh, one. This covers roughly the same focal range as an iPhone 8 or something. I have an iPhone 10 here, which has dual lenses. So this will give you an appreciably also better image than the um, than your smartphone, any smartphone really. And then uh, I also uh, carry this around, which is the X100F. This is if I'm carrying a shoulder bag, right? And this is an APS-C size sensor, so it's even bigger than the one inch sensor. So you get appreciably better. And the color that comes out of here is phenomenal. Same thing with the black and white simulation. If you like black and white photography and just want it straight out of the camera, get the Fuji X100F. Realizing that there's no zoom. Okay. And then I also went over the RX1, 
which I've never did a video on. You know, um, it's a it's a full frame sensor, which means it's going to give you the most light capturing capability and uh, and, and color capturing capability in in low light uh, situations. Um, I liked it, but not super much more, mostly because I didn't like the interface of it, especially when I compared it with the X100F. There is another one that you can look into, and that is the Leica Q. This is this is true premium and also a fixed lens. It's four thousand two hundred and eighty-five dollars right now. It's it shoots a little bit wider. I've only played with it in the Leica store. If I had honestly, if I had the money, I would have tried it out uh, to uh, play around with. But you know, I, I have so many cameras as is. Maybe if I sell all my cameras, maybe I'll get a Leica Q. Uh, that is probably going to be uh, top notch in terms of um, single focal length again. So uh, you're not able to zoom on there. But uh, it's 28 millimeters, which is good general for street photography. All right. Um, I prefer 35. 28 is a little bit wider. While I'm on this topic, there's another one that's been discontinued. So it's going to be a little bit harder to find. And that's the Ricoh GR2. So if you want super compact and you want an APS-C size sensor, uh, looks like, hey, looks like it's still being sold right now. Uh, they're not making any more. It's it's discontinued. So after those are sold out, it's probably not gonna, it's probably not gonna be any more of those things left. But this this produces uh, exceptional image quality as well. It's also a wider field of view, okay. Um, also non-zooming. It's got a cult following because it's really it, it's really small. It's small, it's got a huge sensor, it captures amazing quality photos, uh, crap for video. I don't even remember if it records any video, but it's it's got crap for video. That's another one to consider. Um, I actually sold mine off because, again, I was sticking to the um, X100F for the most part. This is another one to consider as well. And uh, if I was choosing, obviously, between a GR2 and X100F, obviously, you know that I chose the X100F. So uh, that's my preference. But this is actually much smaller. This fits in your pocket, actually. Um, I want to say it's just a little bit bigger than RX100 series, but the RX100 series has the zoom. So the, the, those, are, those are awesome, excellent choices. For you to pick out which one you're going to want to use, uh, you know, you, it really comes down to what kind of shooting you're going to do and what you plan on shooting with it, whether or not you're going to carry it around. Uh, a great buying guide is on dpreview.com, and they have best cameras uh, in different price groups and best for um, what type of user or photographer you are. Best for beginners, best for parents, best for students, best for travel, best for people and events, landscapes, videos, sports, and action, right? So many things to choose from. I haven't actually looked at the one for, that's best for parents. So I'll take a quick look over here. And you can see, look, they recommend it ARCS 100 Mark V as well, which is something that I would recommend just in general. This one packs just about every single feature that you could ever need uh, in a small compact camera, minus the awesome zoom range and minus the amazing speed of the um, RX10 Mark IV, but this is pocketable, you know. The M50 is not one that I haven't tried, and that is uh, because it just came out not that long ago. It's also recommended, but I'm not going there because I haven't tried it, and uh, it's it's just too new. EFM slash lenses are not uh, ones that I have def I have tried so I, I just can't um, I can't mention too much about that right okay how long has this video been going on I've been rambling on for a long time um, one other great way to find out what works well for you is uh, look at all the photos that you like a lot of whether you are a Flickr user whether you're on Instagram maybe they share just kind of what kind of uh, photography you like to use or uh, like to do so for instance if I'm looking at the Fuji X100F you can go ahead and just type that in and it'll show you a bunch of everyone's photos 
here are my photos of the X100F and, and the converter. But you'll see a bunch of other photos and you'll see, hey, are these the style of photos that I like to shoot? If so, maybe this camera might be for me. Okay, just look at all the pictures just in general. You can kind of make out just kind of uh, the, um, the style, the look, um, the situation, the capture that you'll be able to do. So if you'll notice, most of these are going to be at that 35 uh, millimeter range unless someone crops in, right? But if you look at the Sony RX100, Sony RX10, let's see if I could just type in four, you'll see that there's going to be a, a huge range of shots, right? So for instance, you're never going to get, you're never going to get, if you're into bird photography or wildlife photography, you are never going to get this shot with an X100F. That's just not possible. Okay. This does not zoom in that close. It's not a telephoto. If you even try to get this close to this bird, the bird is for heck going to run, uh, fly away, right? Birds, I suppose birds could run, but this one is probably going to fly away from the stick and you wouldn't get this detail. There's just no way if you try to digital zoom this from far away, nor will you get the bokeh, bokeh um, quality that you can get with such a major zoom range and such a sharp lens and details like this. You, you just, just can't. So if you like to shoot from a really far distance away, um, it's also great at close-ups. I mean, just look at look at these example images and you'll see the range that you can get from the X, uh, RX-10 Mark IV that you can't get with these other ones. Now, if you take a look at the RX-100, um, the one that I, okay, let, let's the, look at RX-100 Mark V. You, you've got a nice zoom range that covers most of general photography, actually. So you'll you'll see some uh, a decent range here, but you're not you're never going to get something as close as that wildlife bird. It's just just not going to reach that. It, it tops out at the 70 millimeter range, which is good enough for uh, portraits, right? In general general portrait photography. It's wide enough that you can get some landscape shots in there that just cover uh, just whatever you're you're looking at, and. It does a general good job. You got you got daytime, nighttime photography examples in here. As you can see, these could very much be mistaken for a, a quote unquote professional DSLR camera just because you can. Okay, looks like it sounds like my uh, Mac is ramping up here in the in the fan. I apologize for that. Um, and then finally, let's take a look at the RX1, and you'll see that because it's a full frame sensor. Let's see if we have some good examples here. Full frame sensor. Nighttime shots are going to be um, pretty remarkable on here. And generally, overall, pretty good shots. Pretty good examples. Still, I'm looking at all this, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what I like generally, maybe because um, people are a little bit more creative with the X100F, I somehow tend to like the X100F uh, uh, photographs uh, a little bit more. Let's see about DX01. It's not as popular. I know every time I take it out and shoot with it, everyone always has to ask me, what the heck is that? And yeah, so there's not as, as many examples of DX01, which is unfortunate. And there's also another thing too, is that they, they may or may not go bankrupt. So that's a little bit disappointing. As you can see, uh, it's more snapshot because it's so small. Not as many shots that are all set up. But still, the quality images are probably going to be pretty pretty high and pretty strong. Look, someone actually has the, um, the tripod mount on here and shooting a little time lapse of the DX01. So it's just very much not as many people have one of these. Could be one reason why they're going bankrupt. They put a lot of R&D into this camera, and it is pretty remarkable. Right? Okay, well, that's a slightly disturbing picture. Okay. All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, let me know what you think. Give me a like. Uh, subscribe. If you have any questions about any of the cameras I talked about or just any questions whatsoever you think that maybe I or anybody else that might be watching this video or looking at the comments 
might be able to answer feel free to comment down below share the video with your friends family strangers whichever and um, I will catch you in the next video thanks a lot for watching